if you're someone who's been prescribed an antacid or PPI medication, which stands for proton pump inhibitor medication, you would have been prescribed this for acid reflux. And if you're one of the 100 million people apparently uh, who have been prescribed this medication, it, as you can tell, it's a very commonly prescribed medication, one of the most commonly prescribed. Uh, if, if you take this medication, if someone near and dear to you takes this medication, very important that you learn this data. Now I've done other videos on the association with these meds to increase your risk of infection and deficiencies and bone loss creating osteoporosis and kidney disease and a whole host of other conditions and diseases that uh, are dangerous and potentially life-threatening so you wanted to know about that but this is this is new for me actually I'm constantly <laughs> researching this area because we specialize in hiatal hernia syndrome pretty much everyone we meet as a new patient is already on one of these medications. So here's the data. There's been a lot of studies that have looked at the association of being on these drugs long-term, and I'm going to define what they mean by long-term, and having an increased risk for stomach cancer. So um, in different studies, there was an NIH study that um, they found long-term use increased your risk by one and a half times, so 1.5 increased risk of what they call non-cardia stomach cancer. That's the lower part of the stomach versus the cardia um, part of the stomach is the upper part, which is where the stomach and the esophagus meet. So uh, it's in a specific location, so it's called non-cardia stomach cancer. And so, again, if the, the time frame was more than one year, so somebody's been on it for more than one year, they now have a 1.5 increased risk of developing this cancer. However, if somebody's been on it for three years or more, now the risk went to 2.4, so you're more than doubling your risk of getting this cancer. Um, now, I regularly meet patients who have been on these drugs, not only for years, easily years, but decades. So uh, the risk is very, very real, and a year can go by very quickly. And um, you know, your doctor keeps prescribing it. It's like, wow, it's, it's been over a year, 1.5 increased risk. So this is a serious situation that you really need to know about. Now, the good news, of course, is that we know how to get to the root cause of why you're having the acid reflux, which would then negate uh, your need to take the medication. So that's the good news, that can be done. But I wanna describe this to you a little bit more so you understand why this occurs. So there's a hormone in your stomach called gastrin, and this hormone uh, basically detects when you eat, and it's the hormone that causes your the cells of your stomach to produce hydrochloric acid. So the body's very clever. It's not just producing acid when there's no food. It senses, oh, there's food coming. I'm gonna stimulate my, my parietal cells. Those are the cells of the stomach that make hydrochloric acid. We're gonna make acid. We're gonna break down this food and everything is exactly the way it should be. Now, what happens with food coming, but you have an acid suppressing drug in your system, the body tries to make gastrin and successfully makes it, but then the drug is not allowing it to produce the hydrochloric acid. So what does your body go and say, well, huh, that's not right. I produced, I produced what I was supposed to to get hydrochloric acid as a result. Didn't quite happen. Okay, let me produce more. So it produces more gastrin. So now you have this hyper level of it in your blood. And it is that hyper gastrinemia Emia just means in your blood, so a lot of gastrin in the blood is basically considered to be responsible to have a trophic effect. It just means growth. It's like pouring miracle grow on your plants. You want them to grow and flourish. So, but the gastrin can have this growth effect on little tumors that haven't quite developed into anything. They're thinking about it, and now you're pouring gas on that fire. Sorry to mix my metaphors, um, but you get the idea. 
So that's the association of what happens with these drugs. They're going against Mother Nature's desire to make hydrochloric acid to appropriately break down your food. And because they've done that, uh, you get this hyper level of this hormone in your blood, and that's considered to have a growth effect on burgeoning tumors, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I'm just gonna look at my notes. Um, so uh, tips for avoiding stomach cancer, just on a, as a general rule, don't smoke, don't drink to excess, although now the studies are, you know, any, any alcohol is too much alcohol, uh, within reason, I know it's your birthday, fine, go, go for it. But these, um, you know, daily drinks, several times a week, drinks is really putting you at risk, so you don't want to do that. Uh, one of my favorite topics, highly processed food, is also considered a link to stomach cancer, as is not enough real food, like fruits and vegetables that are loaded with good, healthy fiber, and um, oh, obesity and stress. Stress is always on the, on the list. It makes everything worse, as well as antibiotic use. So now with antibiotic use, we're talking about altering our microbiome that 60 to 100 trillion organisms in your colon that is where your immune system lies so of course a lot of antibiotic use you kill off the good microbes in your in your colon and you're more likely to get infections of any sort but so that's the generalized advice and there's nothing wrong with any of that except very specifically we're talking about a drug that you should not need as long as we can get to the root cause of why you're having acid reflux, which is not difficult to do. So that's what I really wanna share with you. It's not difficult to get to the root cause of why the stomach, who is supposed to, as its job, produce acid, why it is being forced to, well, it's getting compressed, and then that forces the acid up your esophagus. That is the simplicity of it. So where is that outside pressure coming from? That's what we figure out. And if you want to know what it is for you, that's what we have to figure out for you. A lot of times people, is, well, I wouldn't say assume, but want to know, it's like, yeah, but what is it? What is that outside force? And it's different for different people. That's why I don't say what it is, because there isn't a blanket statement. If there was a blanket statement, I'd be delighted to give it to you. There isn't. It's different for different people, and that's what we have to figure out. So that's there's, this is not a cookie-cutter type of approach, but it's a very workable approach. And if we now list, and I've been talking about the dangers of PPIs for quite some time, and, and I missed this association. This is new for me. I really didn't know about the association with stomach cancer. Of course, you know, a lot of this information is suppressed because you have this, you know, number one selling drug and now it's linked to stomach cancer and it's linked to dementia, by the way. At about the same threshold, I'll, I'm gonna just throw this in really quickly because Denmark just came out with a nationwide study that they did on a link between dementia and PPIs and they found that threshold around that three year mark as well as far as increasing the rate of developing dementia. So you should know about that as well. So if this is you, if you're taking antacids of any sort, most especially PPIs, you want to figure out why you need it so that you can get off of it so you're not at a risk for all of these dangerous situations, most especially stomach cancer. So I hope you found this informative. If you like this information, give it a thumbs up. We want more people to be able to get this information and the only way to do that is to increase subscribers so we're doing quite well but we all always want to do better and I do really appreciate you those of you who have subscribed and um, I get a lot of comments I try to answer them all believe it or not and uh, I, I just appreciate you and I appreciate that you want to get better and you want to look at what you can do holistically to improve your health and that's, that's why my team and I are here. All right, we'll talk soon.